Welcome back to the channel everyone. Now you're probably wondering what to do after that flash crash on Tuesday. Should you sell off your CCIV stock as it is or should you wait until the stock goes back up? Well today hopefully I'm going to help you with just that. I'm also going to be telling you about the best SPACs of February and March 2021. Hopefully together we can find the next CCIV that runs over 100%. 200%, 300% or even more. So stay tuned and let's make some money. So let's start by talking about CCIV. And I have to admit, I was caught off guard by them announcing the merger at 11 p.m. on a Monday night. I knew there'd be a slight pop in the stock's price and then a quick crash straight after. But I didn't really expect them to announce at that time. I expected them to announce at the market open when everyone is ready and everyone's at their desks. I expected them to announce during the market hours, just like all of the other CCIV announcements that have happened over the previous few weeks, but they didn't. I also knew that the stock was gonna crash, and I told you the stock was gonna crash. I told you that I planned on selling my shares on the announcement, because I knew the stock would go up and then quickly back down. Because at the end of the day, who was really gonna buy the stock on the announcement? I had already told you that around 60% of the people in those Twitter polls were planning on selling at the announcement. But I also told you guys that my plan was to sell the stock at the pop and then buy it back in that $30 region, that $40 region, that $20 region after the fall. And that's where the stock is now. If I had sold my stock after the pop, would I be buying it back? Absolutely. And that's because I believe in the long-term prospects of CCIV and Lucid Motors. They're US based, they have excellent battery tech and all around tech. They wanna supply larger manufacturers. They have plans to release an SUV, a pickup truck, more luxury SUVs and more luxury sedans and more over the next five to 10 years. They're backed by an excellent team coming from many, many different companies. They have excellent financial backing from the Saudi PIF. They're raising about four, over $4 billion from this reverse merger. And all of this together will really line Lucid Motors up for a great future. I think a portion of why CCIV has fallen so dramatically is because of the dramatic fall in other companies like Neo and Tesla at that flash crash on Tuesday. Tesla is down over 30% from its highs. So is Neo. So when Tesla goes back up and Neo goes back up, I would also expect CCIV to follow suit. I think when Lucid Motors get closer to delivering their Lucid Air in H2 of 2020, and they finalize their plans for their Saudi production facility, and agree on some plans for their Chinese production facility, this all together will all be great catalysts for the stock to rise back to $60 and higher. As the actual merger between CCIV and Lucid Motors draws closer, and that investor's vote draws closer, this is also likely to cause the stock price to increase as well. And therefore, I think we could see that $60 stock price again in a few weeks or a few months. And therefore, if you're wishing you could go back to when the stock was $60 and sell, I don't really think you'll be waiting that long. If you want to hold for the longer term, up to $100, $200, or even higher, Considering that Lucid Motors have raised over $4 billion from this reverse merger, I think that they can expand much quicker than planned and bring forward all of those plans, like I explained in a previous video. Lucid Motors plans to expand its production from 30,000 vehicles a year to 400,000 vehicles a year. But I think it's important to remember that those figures are from their one US factory. If they have a similarly sized Saudi factory and a similarly sized Chinese factory, they could be manufacturing over 1.2 million vehicles per year in the not too distant future. If their first fully built US production facility is gonna cost them around $1 billion, then considering they've raised over $4 billion from the reverse merger, that means that they could build four more factories, meaning they'd have five factories in total. Five factories manufacturing 400,000 vehicles per year is around 2 million vehicles per year. If you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking that red button down below to benefit from in-depth analysis on new up and coming stocks, regular news updates on fast moving stocks and expose style videos to help save you time and grow your stock portfolio. Also, be sure to check out the link in the description down below to the Patreon to become part of the team and discuss stocks before they start blowing up like GSAH, CCIV, BNGO and even more. 
You also get access to my stock portfolio, which is updated daily, weekly live streams, one-to-one -one access, and even more. But for now, let's get back to the video. Now, what about the next best SPACs if you want to move on from CCIV? Well, if you're part of the team on Patreon, you'll know that I was discussing with the team a few days ago about my next favourite SPACs. There's GSAH, the Goldman Sachs SPAC, PSTH, the Bill Ackman SPAC, and IPOF, the Charmath SPAC. They're all looking for companies in the cryptocurrency space, they're looking for payment processing companies, and they're looking for overall fintech companies. Now let's talk about some of the targets that all three of these SPACs are going for. First up, we have BlockFi. Now, don't get this one confused with SoFi. BlockFi are a cryptocurrency trading platform just like Coinbase or Gemini. But BlockFi also pay you interest on your deposits. So not only are you holding Bitcoin and watching the price go up, but you're also getting 8.6% more Bitcoin per year. Similarly to how banks pay you bank interest on your savings account, BlockFi borrows your cryptocurrency and lends it to other people or trades with it to generate a return. On a high interest savings account, you might get paid 1%, 2% or maybe a little bit more interest, but with BlockFi, they actually pay you up to 8.6% interest per year. But BlockFi isn't just about holding crypto and earning interest, no. Say if you had some car repairs or some bills coming up, but you didn't want to sell your cryptocurrency because, well, Bitcoin can be very volatile. You might miss out on some massive gains. With BlockFi, you can take out a loan and use your crypto as collateral. That way you don't have to sell it. You can keep the crypto and get cash out for what you need when you need it. And BlockFi are also releasing a credit card that pays you cash back. In Bitcoin, of course. BlockFi has over $8 billion in client assets, over 125,000 customers, over $100 million in annual revenues, all with a massive gross profit margin of around 30%. One day, BlockFi could be bigger than MasterCard, American Express, JP Morgan, and others with a market cap in the hundreds of billion dollar territory. Next up, we have Stripe. Stripe are a payment processor, and they're one of the largest in the market. When you want to buy something online, you either pay by PayPal or pay by card. And if you're paying by card, it's likely that Stripe is processing the transaction for you. Other competitors are Square, Klarna, Payoneer, and some others. Stripe have some of the world's largest businesses as their customers, such as Amazon, Shopify, Spotify, Uber, Deliveroo, Booking.com, and many more. Stripe have said that they process transactions in the hundreds of billion dollar range per year. Therefore, they're bigger than Payoneer and could be knocking on the doors of PayPal already. If you want to pick up some shares in GSAH, IPOF or PSTH before they announce a merger with BlockFi or Stripe, then be sure to check out my link to free trade down in the description below to get a free share worth up to £200 when you invest a minimum of £1. Yep, that's right, you only have to invest £1 and you will get a free share worth up to £200. Also, be sure to check out the Patreon and join the team. The last room we target is Played. Played is a software company that helps apps link to your bank account for apps that need to do balance checks or to transfer money from your bank account to the in-app account. Played has some huge customers as well. M1 Finance, Monzo, Acorns, SoFi, Coinbase and many more. Played have also already analyzed over $10 billion worth of transactions and this is expected to grow rapidly because their client base is going to be expanding and their current customers are all companies that are growing very fast. More and more people are straying away from the big banks like Barclays, JP Morgan and many more and towards challenger banks like Monzo. More and more people are straying away from traditional investment platforms like Charles Schwab to ease of use platforms like M1 Finance or Robinhood. More and more people are also interested in investing in cryptocurrency through platforms like Coinbase. Effectively, Played will be growing doubly fast. Their current customers will continue growing and need more and more transactions analyzed and they'll be gaining new customers as new apps pop up and current existing apps change their providers to Played. 
And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding the notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.